Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. Today we are back in the hidden world and I am bringing you another mutant, but this mutant is way different than the other ones because it's got three heads. Today you get to meet the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. Now if that phrase sounds familiar to you at all, it's actually from a nursery rhyme from the 1800s and it's come to refer to just a bunch of people with different professions collectively and I thought why not make it into a three-headed mutant and before we get started don't forget to grab your plushes at aceofclay.com we've got the photographer with his zipper mouth that opens and closes and we have Winston the rabbit guide both of these again are available right now at aceofclay.com until they're gone and now without further ado let's meet the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker all right let's get started we're gonna start of course with the armature i've got my wooden plaque here with the holes drilled for the wire it just shaped out the torso and legs and now i'm bulking it out with some aluminum foil then we're gonna go over that and bulk it out further with some super sculpy ultralight and like i said in the intro this is going to be a three-headed mutant so we got one body with three heads and i think we're gonna do three arms and to attach the arms, I'm just going to poke them right into the body like this. In the annals of forgotten lore, whispered tales of the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, once ordinary men whose lives took a sinister turn when the entity struck, merging them into a grotesque three-headed mutant. All right, now that I have the body armature established, I'm just gonna jump right into the heads. We're gonna start with the baker, and I'm gonna give him big round cheeks, kind of make him that like stereotypical chef baker persona. And he's gonna look like he should be jolly, but he's not gonna have a jolly expression at all. So as you can see here by that big pout. And the clay that I'm using for all three of the heads is Super Sculpey Living Doll. After getting that chin on, we're gonna work on his expression and give him some angry brows. In the desolate confines of an abandoned factory, a grotesque mutant known as the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker roams. Its twisted form, a fusion of nightmares and madness. This abomination possesses a single body, yet bears three heads, each with its own malevolent agenda. Now that I have the face and all of the main facial features established, I'm going to go in and start nitpicking and refining everything with my super poker, spoon tool, and a bunch of other ones. And if you're wondering, the super poker will be part of my sculpting tool set that will be coming out uh, later this year, hopefully in the spring. Now we're just gonna pop on his ears. finish off this guy's face I want to give him a very large exaggerated mustache so I'm just using this piece of floral wire and I'm adding the front of the mustache out of clay and then it's going to morph into this long skinny swirl like that as the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker traverse the crumbling corridors their movements are a macabre ballet of horror and dread their strides are long and purposeful their footfalls echoing through the desolate halls with a bone-chilling intensity. And let's pop on the other side of his mustache and check it out. <laughs> I really like his mustache, but I think he needs some eyebrows to match, so let's go ahead and stick those on now. And 
And to finish him off, I'm going to dab on some bacon bond to the surface, like so, to just give him a nice pour texture. And I just love how this finish looks after it's baked. There we go. There's the baker. Now let's work on the butcher. This guy is going to have a very long face, if you can't tell. And he's going to be completely different than the baker. I want these guys to be very unique from each other. And not only do I want their faces to look different because I don't want them to look related or anything, like they're three completely different dudes that have been morphed into this mutant. You'll learn more about that as the story continues. But I also want them to have very different expressions. So here I'm trying to add cheekbones that I don't like and I'm not really sure like how to do them to make them flow with the rest of his face. So I end up smashing those later. So don't pay attention to those. We're just going to use our spoon tool here and start carving out his gigantic smile. I've only carved out half of his smile because he's going to be wearing a mask and it's, the rest of it's going to be hidden underneath that. Standing at a towering height of 10 feet, their monstrous silhouette casts a pall of terror over the forsaken landscape. Their twisted forms a grotesque testament to the darkness that dwells within the shadows. And now his face is really coming together. Let's get him finished. I just love contrasting features like this guy has a huge smile, a huge nose, beady eyes that are cl really close together. And then he's got these tiny little ears. Like, I just love that. I just think it just balances everything out. These little ears. And I love the super poker tool for wrinkles like this. And the one that I'm going to be releasing is going to be like this, but it's going to be better. It's not going to be like straight off the shelf. None of the tools that I'll be offering are going to be straight off the shelf. But anyway, let's go ahead and give him a really nice cleft chin. Now I'm going to make his mask. I textured this with the textured part of a sculpting tool and I'm just adding a couple of wrinkles and we're going to stick it to his face. Love it. And now for some tiny little snakes of clay to create the strings that hold the mask to his face. These are made out of cos clay because cos clay stays flexible after it's baked. And you'll notice that I make all of the really delicate areas out of cos clay. Amid the decaying halls of the factory, where shadows wove among rusted machinery and crumbling debris. The trio lurked in anticipation. They awaited their movement to venture beyond the factory's confines, to unleash their malevolent wrath upon the unsuspecting world. Their twisted forms, bound in a sinister union, exuded an aura of terror that permeated the air with an ominous presence. All right, now we're getting started on the candlestick maker. And this guy, I want him to be a very gaunt, creepy elderly man, <laughs> as you can tell already. And he's going to have this kind of like mouth open expression and big bags under his eyes that I'm adding right now. And he's just going to be, like I said earlier, very different from the baker and the butcher. And instead of a really big nose, we're going to give him a really small nose. And of course, we got to press in some nasolobial folds. And this I want this guy to almost look like ghostly. Like this guy could totally be a ghost. And distinguished, I think. I want him to look kind of noble in a way. You know, like he's just got a lot of wisdom or something. I don't know, something different.
Now let's go ahead and get those brows on. And of course, some more wrinkles. The Butcher, with white eyes like smoldering embers and hands stained with the blood of countless victims, prowled the corridors with a predatory grace. His rusted cleaver, gleaming dully in the dim light, was a testament to the savagery that lurked within his soul, hungering for the taste of flesh and the sweet music of screams. Now back to contrasting features, this is actually pretty important when you're making your own characters. You want the features to complement each other, you don't want them to fight. So for example, on this guy, I gave him a really small nose, but larger ears. It just works together better than if I were to make all of his features huge. Even though the sky is the limit, you still want balance. Now I'm just going to snap a couple photos for my Instagram subscribers. You can subscribe for $2.99 a month to get a behind the scenes look at what I'm sculpting every week while I'm sculpting it. Head to my Instagram at of Clay to join in. Now that all three of the heads are done, let's go back to the body. I'm going to cover it in some Super Sculpey Original and I got these nice even sheets by rolling the clay through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. I just want to give myself a nice smooth surface to work on. And before I go any further, I want to put the arms and the necks in their almost final positions. And then let's start covering all the limbs and clay. I like brushing all of my wire with Bacon Bond before I attach the clay because it sticks so much better and I think it's just as effective, if not more effective, than wire wrapping. Once all my basic shapes are blocked out, we're going to start adding detail. Using some snakes of clay, I'm creating folds and wrinkles on his arms and legs. The baker, his scowl etched into his features as though it were carved by the hands of fate, exudes an aura of perpetual disdain. Wielded a rolling pin etched with the screams of the tormented, with each cackle that echoed through the empty halls, he conjured visions of unspeakable torment, his laughter a haunting melody that chilled the bones of even the bravest souls. Alright, let's keep going with those folds and wrinkles. Lots of snakes of clay, all where they should be. And let's just pop on the heads to make sure we're on the right track. And then while the heads are on, I want to position the necks just to make sure they're all looking where I want them to. Now it's time for accessories. The butcher will be holding a butcher knife, of course. The baker will be holding a rolling pin and the candlestick maker will be holding a candlestick. We're gonna make those three items now. Starting with the butcher knife, I embedded a piece of wire where the handle is going to be just to reinforce it and I'm cutting it out with my blade. there's the butcher knife. Now let's work on the rolling pin. I'm embedding this toothpick inside a snake of clay that I cut to size and we're going to blend everything together like that and then add the little handles on each end and then texture it to look like wood. And for the candlestick, we're going to start with this skinny piece of aluminum wire, brush on some bacon bond, put a layer of clay on, and then add all the different shapes and the actual candle holder piece.
And once all these items are done, I'm going to pre-bake them so they're easy to just stick in their hands when the time comes. And I don't know about you, but I think he needs some more Fulton wrinkles. So let's get those on and then we can move on to some other details. The butcher and the candlestick maker are going to have collars, so let's get those on now. The candlestick maker, his hollow eyes flickering with malevolent intent, clutched a sinister candlestick, wreathed in dark magic, with whispered incantations that hung heavy in the air, like a shroud of doom. He wove spells of despair that twisted the very fabric of reality, sealing the fates of those unfortunate enough to cross his path. And because you can't just walk into a store and get a shirt with three arms and three holes for three different heads, it's going to be custom made. So I made it look like it was stitched together, two different fabrics, and now we're creating the waist of his pants. And I think we're just going to bring everything together with a nice apron. Of course, making this out of cosplay, trying to get the shape down, getting it to the size that I want, and then I'm going to wrinkle and crinkle it in the air so it looks nice and dynamic once I stick it on. And then for the ropes that go around his waist, again using some more cosplay to make these tiny little snakes of clay. And I think the candlestick maker needs a scarf, so let's pop that on now. And I thought a bowler hat would be a nice addition to the candlestick maker. And just for fun, we're going to stick a melted candle on top of it. This poor guy's a mess. And even with the hat, I felt like something was missing, so we're going to give him some hair. United in their insatiable thirst for carnage, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker worked in sinister tandem, their twisted minds crafting a symphony of terror that echoed through the halls of the factory like a funeral dirge. Here I'm just adding some texture and then we're going to give him a bunch of nice flyaways. There we go, much better. And for the butcher, I made him this nice paper hat. For the baker, of course he's got to have a baker's hat or a chef hat, so 
just made that bottom part there and the top part gonna stick it on beautiful now this sculpture is the prime example of why armature is important and why good armature is important if i had weak wire in this guy's legs this thing would be a mess he is very top heavy but my aluminum wire is super strong and I was able to work on this guy and add virtually as much weight as I wanted to the top without any issues. So take your time during the armature process. I know it can be boring, but it's worth it. Your sculpture and your mental health will thank you in the end. The butcher, ever the hunter, stalked his prey with a predator's patience his senses keen to detect the slightest hint of fear that lingered in the wind. With each silent step, he closed in on his victims, his cleaver poised to strike with deadly precision. And to attach all the accessories, I'm just using some floral wire to literally wrap them around the armature that's in the arms. And it works well, they're super light, pieces that I'm attaching this way so it's not a big deal if you're if you want your character to hold something a little heavier I would probably recommend building the accessory into the main armature of the body and then of course I just wrapped those cosplay hands around all of that wire and it worked great now we're going to give this guy some boots And I really love this little like cross hatching tool thing to like weather different areas of clothing and stuff just kind of nicks it just the right way. After some shoelaces and popping on the baker's hat, I think this guy's ready to bake. It's been a long process. <laughs> and once they're baked and completely cooled down, it's time for paint. As you can see, I did not attach the baker's head before I baked the sculpture because I wanted to be able to remove it because painting the other two guys' heads next to him would have been a nightmare. And to paint each of these guys' heads, the process is identical. I go in with a nice medium color that I want for the base tone of the face, then I go in with a darker version of that color as a wash, get into all those nooks and crannies, and then a lighter version of the base color as a nice dry brushing on the surface to bring out the details and highlights even more. In the somber depths of the forsaken corridors, the baker's laughter, though twisted, carried echoes of a forgotten melody, haunting yet strangely captivating. Behind his icy facade lay a heart ensnared by shadows, its depths concealed until the moment was ripe. With a craftsmanship akin to artistry, he would lay his snares weaving a tapestry of deceit that ensnared unsuspecting souls. And in the quietude of his lair, his rolling pin, once a tool of creation, became an instrument of tragic finality, sealing the fates of those who dared to venture too close. I loved painting his facial hair. I just think it just, it brought his whole persona together. Now I'm going in with a very, 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 very light dusting of red paint just to give him a little bit of color in his cheeks and nose. I went kind of hard on his nose, so I have to fix that later, but yeah. Now on to the candlestick maker. Again, same process as the baker. Going in with that wash and then finishing him off with some dry brushing, going in with a fine paintbrush to really bring out those wrinkles.
the candlestick maker, his dark magic crackling like lightning in the air, unleashed his sinister power with the flick of his cursed candlestick, ensnaring his prey in a realm of eternal torment from which there could be no escape. With each whispered incantation, he sealed their fates with sinister glee, reveling in the suffering that followed. For the clothes, I'm going to go in with a lot of browns and beiges instead of grays. There's a lot of grays going on in their faces. Let's make the clothes brown. And so, as the shadows deepened and the night stretched into eternity, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker continued their reign of terror, their twisted forms casting a long and sinister shadow over the forsaken town. And as the echoes of their laughter faded into the darkness, they knew that their legacy would endure, a grim testament to the darkness that lurked within the hearts of men. And this guy is quite the sloppy butcher. Look at all the dirt on his shirt. <laughs> After getting the brown dry brushed, we're going to paint the apron this nice taupe color. And then we're going to add some stripes. Those are fun. After the stripes and some dry brushing, let's dirty it up. And if you can't see it there, I added a little skull where the tie is in the front on his apron. Gotta put a little skull motif on all my mutants. As the night descended and their sinister laughter faded into the shadows, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker vanished, leaving behind whispers of dread in an ominous sense that their story was far from concluded. And that is the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. And just to make my life easier, I cut off his scarf to paint it, and then we're just gonna glue it back on. Perfect, like I never took it off. Now let's paint that base and then get that butcher knife and candlestick painted. Now we can call this guy done. But look at that, how that treasure gold silver goes on. Like, ugh, it's just a flash of light. And the treasure gold gold. Beautiful. Love painting metallics over black. And after all that, say it with me. And he's done, or should I say, they're done. The butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker are complete. Let me know what you think in the comments.
I really hope you enjoyed this video and this sculpting process. This sculpture was an absolute blast. I know I keep saying that I'm gonna release another guide, but this idea, I just, I couldn't keep it in my head any longer and I had to get it out and I really, really, really hope you like it. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. Join my Facebook group, Snakes of Clay, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.